He is described as a chef who brings his diners on a journey of evolving tastes. He recently opened Juni Restaurant right here in New York, and we are lucky enough to have Chef Sean Herget in the Better Show kitchen. And we're making, I've never made this before in all my cooking segments, candied striped beets? Yeah. Beets. Beets. Like the root vegetable. The Correct, beet. 100%. Fantastic. Well, what, what is the inspiration behind this? Seasonality. Seasonality. Right. And it's also delicious. Those and healthy. Are, those are tasty. all great things. Absolutely. So show me how we do this. Okay, so what we have over here, we start out with some beets. We cook them off, then we peel them. We have some pears. Obviously, we uh, peel those as well. These are candy striped beets that we get from um, Chef's Garden, which is in Ohio. And then what we do is we shave them on a mandolin so they're nice and thin. Oh, I thought it was a flower. Those are actually shaved? Shaved candy beets. Shaved beets, okay. They actually naturally grow like that, which is crazy. Beautiful. And then some hazelnuts roasted. Then we have a couple of little dressings. So what we're going to All do, right. very simple. It's We wanted to do this so you could do it at home as well. Cook the beets until they're a little bit, they have texture. Don't overcook them so they're all soft Don't and, get them mushy. and mushy. Absolutely not. So we're going to put them on the plate. You can help me out as well. Okay, these are wait, these are beets. They're beets. They look like squash or something. They're, they, cool, they're right? not red anymore, right? Stick the pears on the plates, any uh, any way that you want. Okay. We always like to be a little Very bit high random. tech, right? Yeah. We we'll put some red beets on there as well. All right. And just basically pour it over the top. We'll place it nice and clean and easy. So we've really Grab just kind of blanched well. them, or you've? Well, you know, I think salted water at home is always good. Add a little bit of herbs to it, rosemary and thyme. They cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. All right. And then food should be nice. It should, it should be easy, you know. Okay. Grab the uh, the other bottle, take okay. the lid off, give okay. it a shake. Yeah, and what are these? This is actually beet reduction. And then what we're going to do is we're going to dress it. I like to be artistic in the food of what we make over at Juni. And I think wow. we should do it at home as well. You Go clearly got a flair for that. I don't. You really trust no, no, me absolutely. to do that? Absolutely, one hundred percent. I don't know whether I trust you, <laughs> but you can do, do it. I'm going to try to do what uh, sh the chef just did. Here we go. I don't know. I keep going. There we go. That's good. Really? Yeah. And then we get some red ribbon sorrel. I'm going to stick that on the top okay. just to finish off the plate. Now, what we need to do is actually turn on this thing. Okay. And see if we can start the uh, induction stove. We can. I know we can. I know we have that technology. All right. Now, this is some pearl barley. I think that traditionally risotto comes from rice, right? Right. Pearl barley is really hard to overcook, so we pre-blanch this. A little bit of chicken stock, no salt, until when you put it in your mouth, it's a little bit text it has texture, but not okay. raw. Now, when you cook this, cook it like a simple risotto. So we're going to add a little bit of chicken stock to it. Okay. And that'll melt in. That's awfully. That's a thick uh, chicken stock there. Yeah. Well, we make it in house, and I think the gelatin from the bones is is pretty awesome. But if you at home, just use a, a can. Regular. Something that's yeah, easy. Always like easy at home. Cream. Now we need to turn this up. All right, crank that up. It's all the way up. We're on high. Then we're going to add a little bit of butter. Oh, yeah. Or a lot of butter. A little more butter. You want some more butter? A little more butter. Or a little bit more butter. What's the Julia Child said about butter? I don't okay. know. What did she say? Some, something about you can never have too much. Exactly. Right? Some parmesan cheese. Now, that's oh. going to melt through, and it's going to bring all of those flavors together. All right. You know, personally, you can add a lot of salt to it. You can add pepper to it. You can add herbs to it. We're going to add some chives. Okay. So that's nice and easy. Once this actually cooks down, we have, if you pass this platter over here, yeah, sure. there we go. Oh. I think that food should always have a connection with, with what you're doing. So we have pearl barley, we have a little bit of butternut squash, and obviously some Brussels sprouts as well. Hello. Mm, hi. Rebecca, Rebecca yeah, I just could smell this I Parmesan smell cheese this. melting. It smells so delicious. Okay, oh, so yeah. go ahead, finish your thought. And then what we have is a little bit of radishes that we shave as well, just as garnish, but this is really a, a thing for beauty. Um, and some toasted pumpkin seeds. So what we're going to do is we're going to cook the risotto down until it becomes sticky, put it on the plate. We're going to heat up the rest of the vegetables very lightly, nothing too crazy, and then pour it over the top. Uh, finish it with the pumpkin seeds. We give nice texture and also flavor, and as you can see, it's nearly ready. And when it it's like going to look like this. When it's well, and that's how you, that's that, that's how you plate it up at the end? <laughs> now, yeah. as, as we get down, the, the best way to know that it's ready is when it starts to come together, it's a little bit sticky, that's when it's ready to go on the table.